Barbara Liss here, Montana Bliss Artworks, and today I want to talk further about uh, pigments and additives to your concrete mix. So another product that I purchased cost me $101 that included shipping, and it's a 25-pound bucket. And it's supposed to be for vertical applications, boosts the strength, optimal carving properties, and long open time. It definitely gives you long open time, but for sculpting, it is a problem. And so if you're new to sculpting with concrete, do not use a product that um, tells you that it gives you a longer open time because what that truly is doing is bringing water to the surface and you're sculpting and when you bring water to the surface it's, it melts your features away and um, it causes too much slump so when I make a mound and I start carving my mound is kept going flat and I started over, threw it all back in the bucket, added some more sand, gave it some more time. But the entire time that I was working, that moisture still kept rising in areas. So some areas that was thicker, I had to actually add a little uh, water to get the adhesion I needed to be adding um, concrete onto certain areas and then other areas it was almost puddling. So here it is. It's not quite as, as uh, fine as the lime was, but because you can feel a little grit to it. But this is my silica, the gray Portland cement. There is a white Portland cement, but it has a different composition and it's stickier. And I don't care for that for sculpting because it's sticking to my fingers and sticking to my tools and a little less manageable. This is a pigment color that I frequently use. And all of these ingredients mixed together with that pigment, this is the color it is when it's wet. So I want to show you um, what my sculptures look like, even though it's this dark, what it's going to look like when it dries. So I put my number of my colors on the inside of the lid so when I run low I know which one I need. And I do add this gold color. And you have to be really careful because there's another gold that has red in it. And it doesn't look much different but red is a very powerful color and the tiniest bit in your mix will bring a pink color to your browns. And then these other colors are actually used for additives to um, clothing or something that I add to the pieces. So here's a brown and can you see that there's red in that brown? versus this brown. So you will get a pink cast from this brown. This one has much more gold in it. So I really do want them to look different. So you find a color that you make, but it is important to vary them unless you want all your pieces to always look the same. And this one is, is light but it kind of went with her feathers. That does have blue. So this is a little bit of blue in the gray, and then of course a much brighter blue. And it takes a lot of blue pigment to give you that effect. And I rarely um, add color. But this one also had a little um, blue color in his shirt. What I find most important to me is having a product that provides the stickiness that you need 
when you're adding concrete on. So you take some off when you're sculpting and then in other areas you're adding it back on and you need that to adhere. So the stickiness of it is very important. So I get good moisture and good stickiness and this product also does um, help in outside applications because a lot of my pieces are outside. I had a piece that I let sit outside in water through a Montana winter. So it was in ice, solid ice, and then I just let it thaw and it was back in the water and I took it out in the spring, it was fine. So a great test for the durability of your concrete especially when you add an additive, a plasticizer. Today, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time I show you another product that I will be trying out. So if you're interested in seeing more product reviews and how they work in sculpting concrete, please subscribe to my channel, Barbara Liss, Montana Bliss Artworks. Thank you.